Um, perfect. I was going to say we're recording this for those of our you know, um, neighbors who couldn't attend tonight, but had expressed interest in, in coming. We feel fairly confident this, this will not be the first and only community listening session. This is just the start, and we're really excited about this. So I'll get started with a brief introduction. Uh, I'm My name is Jenny Pu. I am the library director here at Hoboken Public Library, and I'm, I'm thrilled and honored to be joined by our board president, Dr. Jerome Abernathy. Jerome? He's a board president of the Board of Library Board of Trustees. And we also have um, members from the city's um, administration, Jason Freeman, a business administrator. And I saw Jen, I think I saw Jen Gonzalez, Jennifer Gonzalez, yeah. director. Okay. Uh, Jen, yes, Jen is I'm there here. also. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, so hopefully a few more people will join on, but again, we're recording this. Um, so we will get started. Oops. Okay. All right. So um, briefly, what the objectives and how tonight's virtual meeting is going to work is it's really simple. We're just going to go through from the library's perspective, what, you know, why we really believe in this project, why we're excited about this opportunity, um, what we want to explain, kind of why we believe this. We'll show some examples of what's been done already in other cities. These are recent projects, um, shared library facilities um, that are quite innovative. And then finally, we're here to listen to, to you. So we wanna hear what you, the community members, want to see in a new Uptown Public Library. Oops. Um, Feel free to leave comments in the chat while we will have a section, you know, our presentation portion will be relatively brief. We really want to, to invite, we want this to be very participatory, but if you're unable to stay towards the end or if you'd rather just leave comments in the chat, um, please feel free to do so. Okay. Jerome, should I turn it over to you? Absolutely. Go ahead. <laughs> you want to talk okay, about driving the car now? Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for taking the time to join us. Um, you know, we're here to solicit your to tell you about this project and solicit your ideas for an uptown branch. Um, I want to emphasize this is your library, so um, we we value your input, I and mean, so you're the ones who know what services you want what program that you want to see, what you want to see in the facilities. So think of this as that we want you to take ownership of this plan. Uh, but what I wanted to do right now is give you the rationale for why we need an uptown branch. And, and this is something that we've been, we've been trying to do for, for years, actually. Um, we've looked at various locations uptown, um, none have actually worked out. And we are thrilled that this is the the first time that we have something that um, that potentially will really um, work for us. Um, in short, the reason we want space uptown is because the center, the population center of gravity of Hoboken has shifted in that direction. I mean, it started years ago with the development of Maxwell and the T building, and then we've seen all the other buildings go up there. All the, the buildings uh, say, west of Willow back to uh, the Palisades. And, the, and we look forward to the development of the Northwest Quadrant. But what that means with that large high density housing there, uh, the population growth has really been centered in the, nor the North and the Northwest part of town. And let me see how I go to the next page here. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, and so, but, but with the population shifting to that part of town, the, the, the thing about uptown is that uh, that's the part of town that's furthest away currently from library services. So we, we have here on a map of the distances from, from various, um, um, from our various uh, locations. Well, the thing is, is that, um, you know, if we were anywhere else, a 1.1 or 1.2 miles wouldn't seem like much. But the primary mode of transportation, as you know, the primary mode of transportation in Hoboken is walking. And so the walking time from uptown and from the Northwest is average about 25 minutes. So you could imagine that um, 
um, if it's really hot out or it's raining or it's snowing or, or, or um, you're pushing a stroller, that, that that becomes quite a barrier to accessing library services. And so with the center of gravity shift towards that part of town, um, actually that the people who live in the northern part of Hoboken, who live in the northwest part of Hoboken, have the most difficulty, the most friction in accessing library services. And so that's why we thought that um, a branch up there would, uh, would make a lot of sense. Um, also, I can figure out how to forward pages here. Um, excuse me, hold on. I think I'll figure this out. Ah, also the, the other reason that uh, we, need, we need space in general. Um, the main library branch, which was built in the, the 1890s, um, only has a, a, a bit over 13,000 square feet of usable space. That is space that we can use for programming, for, for our collection and other purposes. Um, according to the American Library Association, for a town of our size, we should have a minimum, well, this was back when the population was 50,000, but now it's 60,000. We should have a minimum of about 50,000 square feet of usable space. Um, an uptown branch would hopefully add about 22,000 square feet. Jason, are you listening? And uh, so we, we, that would help us go a long ways towards uh, fulfilling our mission to the community. Um, the greatest barrier right now Frankly, we underserve our community. And we underserve, we, we don't provide the level of programming and services that we should. And that's because we're constrained by space. We don't have enough space to put on the level of programming and other activities that we should. And so by adding the, the Uptown branch, that would give us a long way towards um, providing the level of services our community both needs and deserves. Um, and so those, those are the primary reasons why we, we have been looking for an uptown branch for a very long time. It's that um, the, the population center of gravity has shifted towards the Northwest. Uh, people who live in the Northwest part of town um, are the furthest away from library services. And this helps us fulfill our goal of, um, of creating enough space to um, to provide a, a more adequate level of library services. And so, oh, there you go. Um, if you can, am I, am I in control or someone else controlling this? I, I'm controlling it, so I- Oh, so you keep going. <laughs> oh, you want me to keep going? Okay. Yeah, uh, go to the, the photo renderings. Um, oh. One more, there one more. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. There, there you go. Um, this is a rendering. Um, Jerry, a little excitement here. This is a rendering of, of sort of photorealistic rendering of the proposed municipal center. And there along 15th Street here in the front is where the library would be located. It would be at street level, uh, maybe the, the floor above that. Um, and so, um, and, and of course, you heard last night that they were talking about cafes and things like that. Um, we, we think that would, that would do a lot towards, a, to, it would add to the pedestrian streetscape of uh, 15th Street, along with uh, the other new development and retail that's going to come along. So we, we, we think we're, we're really excited because this is exactly the sort of um, um, layout that, that a branch library should have that's successful, it's at street level, it's at eye level. Um, so um, what we're going to do tonight is talk about, okay, there's, there's a box, there's space here. What should go in that space? What sort of uh, services and programming should it, um, should it offer? And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jenny, who's going to talk about what other libraries have done. Great. Okay. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, again, welcome to those who just joined us. Um, we, I'm going to just talk very, there are many, many really interesting examples of um, mixed and shared use public library branches throughout the country. And what I'm showing tonight are branches. These are not main libraries with 100,000 square feet, but these are, as we would say in the real estate field, which I'm not in, comps. So comparably sized 
new public library branches in urban areas. Um, so the first one I'm gonna show is a city that's very much like Hoboken, Cambridge, Massachusetts, nine square miles, nine public libraries. And this was presented um, just at the Public Library Association National Conference last week in Portland. And this, their library branch was the anchor and the director of recreation co-presented at this um, at this panel and it was fascinating because he talked about, it's built by the way, he talked about the synergy of the, the library with recreation and the schools. So in this example, Cambridge created a branch on a full city block. They collaborated with their schools in creating an academic wing, a community wing, and uh, really fronted by the Valente branch library. As you can see here, they also too built a pool civic common assembly spaces, an outdoor reading garden, which we'll see photos of, and a full pre-K through upper school um, academic wing. This is some of the front side of the, um, the community complex. And here's like a general layout of what the, the footprint um, looks like here. Again, courts, pools, gyms. So, what the library and what the community felt like they wanted a place where, again, to, to Jerome's point, would erase the friction. You have families who want to take advantage of recreation, who also want a safe and quiet space um, or an active space to collaborate, to study, to read, to meet other people. Um, so it's really like wraparound services in this one location. And here is just some, some photos from the branch that is fully open right now. As you can see, lots of natural light coming in from uh, the street. This is uh, the public library. It's a, it's a 10,000 square feet branch. Now it looks much larger because of the soaring windows that front the street. Here's the outdoor library uh, reading space, which um, they said they were, uh, Happy to say that they used it every day during the pandemic, even in um, really cold weather. There's a garden there. I should notice um, that within this complex, there are bookable community rooms. There, um, you can even in the library borrow bocce equipment if you want to use it for their field. So you don't have to bring your own bocce equipment. They've also built and um, within this community complex an auditorium because as any thriving urban city should have, we should have a public space where we can host literary events, author talks, visits, uh, gatherings, debates. So they built this into this, uh, this complex. And here's just an example of all the things you can do right here in, this, uh, in the Cambridge community complex. The next example I'm gonna show is from Maryland and this, um, branch just open. It was uh, constructed during the pandemic and it's fully open. It's uh, a library in Maryland that used approximately 10,000 square feet that was um, basement underground that was just used for storage. And they thought, you know, we really need to turn this into an active space. And so they went out and had a very participatory, participatory process and solicited community feedback. And in their community, the number one request was for a commercial kitchen and the library built it. It is a working commercial kitchen that is, <laughs> their issue now is they need more staff because the programs are booked within minutes of offering. They also built within the space, um, a, a, a innov innovation lab where people can try out new technologies such as virtual reality. Here's some other pictures of this. So as you can see, this is the front of the library and you go down to the basement to the exploration commons. This space does not have any stacks. They wanted it to be an active um, multi-purpose space. And here's the layout. Similarly, they built in a large meeting room, which can be used for meetings, for, for seminars. They built a, a audio visual lab, a maker space. Um, they also collaborated with their you know, art uh, community and built in gallery space right within the library. So, and here is the com commercial kitchen with teaching classrooms. So uh, what a modern 
library is, is many things to many people because we serve all members of our community. So in this, in Maryland, their centerpiece was this kitchen, which you can see right here. It's you, like I said, it's uh, the library director joked at the panel, even she could not get a class. Her privilege is library director. No, no. <laughs> so which which is a testament to the true success when a community, you know, really provides the feedback and the library builds around that. It's 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 a real hub. Here are some of these multi-purpose meeting rooms slash classrooms, which all members of the community can book. The, the leading example and really innovative partnerships comes from Chicago, and some of you may have heard this in the, or read about this in the news. Um, so Brian Banner, who's now at NYPL, led this at, when he was commissioner of libraries. They have now four partnerships with the Chicago Housing Authority, public libraries built within um, affordable senior housing units. So this is one branch that was built a couple of years ago, the Independence Branch. The bottom is fronted by a library branch, I think approximately 19,000 square feet in the top level, in, which was built by an award-winning architecture firm, um, provides affordable, low-income senior housing. Here are some of the, oops, pardon me. Here are some of the photos of this. Um, as you can see, they really took advantage of the height to build this great space where they can use for um, public events. It's a very open air, be a multi-use space with low stacks for kids. Also has a split level mezzanine. We're seeing more of that to let in maximum uh, natural light, which a lot of our historic buildings just don't have by their nature. Another example of this um, really beautiful space. In the back, you'll see there's uh, a mural in one of their uh, multi-purpose rooms. And here's the opening of it, as you can see, in use. There's a mayor, former mayor, um, Emmanuel giving the welcome and here is the art lab that's used and Chicago with all of their branches, like I said, um, Mayor Lightfoot just announced last summer they're opening a fourth one and they're adding things like pre K classrooms They're they're providing in all of their branches mixed media space for teenagers recording studios, as well as, of course, the core traditional library services of literacy engagement programming outreach. And an example from California, uh, I believe this is now finished. Again, it was delayed by COVID, uh, the Northeast Stockton Library and Community Center. As we're seeing, we're seeing more and more of this combination of not just a public library, but it's library and community center. Um, what I liked about this, what was so unique is be, be, being California, they brought in the outdoors inside. So there's an interior courtyard. So you don't even have to leave a library kind of to be outside. And they had, let me see, what was that? So they also incorporated recreation, maker activity, a cafe that was intentionally close to their kitchen. Um, so as you can see, you know, libraries are becoming much more than, than stacks. They're becoming a place where you can go learn how to make a, not only look up a recipe, but to make it. Um, our neighbors just across the river opened that beautiful, the former Midman, Manhattan branch. I love this because um, even the way we make music now is changing and um, increasingly public libraries are offering spaces where our youth can go and create, whether it's making music, podcasts, video recordings. Libraries have um, traditionally been the first to offer these cutting edge technologies, whether it was printing or the internet. And we continue that vein by, by making sure we provide equitable access to this kind of, um, this, these kind of resources. I show this picture to the right because Hoboken, as we know, and I had a picture in one of my earlier slides about all the strollers. Um, you know, this could be something very unique to the Hoboken Public Library. Um, we, <laughs> we have a very, uh, very vibrant family community and wouldn't it be great to have a dedicated stroller parking space with coats, right, for, for the, our smallest patrons. We see this in museums now, um, but this was just built in uh, Michigan, Baldwin Public Library. They redid part of their children's room, incorporating feedback from the community to have this cubby, stroller, coat space for their um, families. And then finally, we, well, I shouldn't say finally, there's one more. We don't have to look very far. 
Our neighbors, just a couple miles north of here, North Bergen Public Library, um, is under construction right now, um, building a co-located the city's recreation center and library. The library occupies the uh, first two floors. They share it with recreation, um, and they also provide underground parking, 69 spaces. At the top, there is a rooftop um, soccer turf field. I, I've, I was very privileged to tour it with the um, really visionary library director there who's done great work. And so I have a couple of photos, but the, the space, you know, was this blank canvas and from the feedback with their community in North Bergen, you know, they put, they are putting in um, a performance stage. I apologize, it's a little rough they're under construction. This is part of the library looking out um, over a running track, a gym, and the gym space will be shared with the library and recreation for large cultural events that traditionally North Bergen had to just uh, permit and hold in the streets. Now they have an enclosed, a really nice, well-ventilated space where they can have these, uh, these events for their community. Um, so that's, that's North Bergen. You know, the idea is, is really uh, maximizing partnerships, which is why we're so excited to be part of this um, complex co-located with public safety, with um, other core services for our community members. And it's about activating spaces with what we call zones, quiet and active zones. So this is just an example of what the process would look like. We would, you know, we'd get together with whatever firm, we'd solicit feedback and start kind of laying out spaces. Um, and here's my here, I believe, I'm trying to forget, maybe this is Wyoming. They also built a commercial kitchen, actually a teaching kitchen, right. And where they cooked meals and, um, you know, taught classes. So the idea is the, the, when you focus on community, you're really expanding, you know, ensuring that the library, we are enabled to provide space for literacy in all forms, whether it's financial or digital, helping our newest, um, Americans adjust and succeed here, uh, providing, uh, you know, partnering and really um, expanding the library, the city services, whether it's providing senior citizen meals, food pantry, um, assisting with the city's business startups. I didn't even touch upon that. And this is, um, this is my last example, because I can go on and on about this. Um, this is a concept I worked on with another firm with a, 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 um, a public library of sorts, a community college library, which is open to the public. And it was a blank canvas because it was built with this wide open space. But the problem is we didn't have a family space. And so we talk about, especially with COVID, needing spaces that are flexible and responsive. And this is a space where we've built pods, like co individual co-working spaces where Guardians, caretakers could, you know, do their work or take their class and then look into this family zone that was, you know, you had line of sight in, but you can get your work done and you could bring your kids to the library. Um, and you have these tall cafe tables and the soft seating and we would put some, you know, interactive mater materials as well as uh, books. Um, and then you have these really interesting kind of airport lounge um, uh, seatings that students really need to focus like individually, they still want to be part of um, of a community. Um, so this is one example of, of a really innovative academic library family zone that um, that work we will be seeing more of as well. So that I think concludes my portion of the presentation. Again, I'm, I'm always excited to see um, what public libraries are doing. I think this is just such a ripe opportunity for Hoboken to have, as Jerome said, um, and what the city reiterated last night, a modern, fully accessible, um, adaptive, flexible, vibrant spaces that can serve, you know, everyone, um, and that can be, you know, can serve our community for many years going into the future. So. I guess this portion of the of the uh, of the meeting is we can you know I'm happy uh, we have senior members for administration who worked um, on who presented last night at Fox Hills to answer questions up at the actual facility but we're we're here to like get your feedback 
and we're doing this very informally. We'll, we'll share a Google Doc, and if, if you'd like to just raise your hand and speak, we'll take notes. Again, we're recording this, but we're, we're here to hear the community's feedback about what you want in your or our um, Uptown Library Branch. I believe one of the architects last night called it the North Library Branch, which kind of had a nice sound, so I put that in here. But um, Jerome, Jason, Jennifer. Oh, they, um, so um, uh, I, this is the time for if anyone has any ideas, um, please uh, keep your comments to uh, a couple of minutes. Um, but we would love to hear from you at this point. Uh, the chat is open as well if you'd like to text um, you know, your comments or, or ideas. But uh, this is the, the, the place where we uh, welcome your, uh, your ideas and your input. So everyone don't raise your hand at once. <laughs> So and, and so in, in the end, in, uh, why don't I do have something pressing? So why don't I start? Um, Jenny, can you talk to us about um, uh, about um, uh, small meeting rooms? Because there's community organizations in town, uh, various clubs, uh, organizations, and and um, um, you know I've heard that that there isn't really space a public space available where you could where you could book a meeting room um that that doesn't exist in town um can you talk about what other towns are doing in that regard what other libraries are doing yeah absolutely i guess i'll let me stop share this uh the libraries are providing those spaces bookable individual community rooms that I mean, the library, I think in the past, we have offered them to, to community groups, but um, public libraries all over the country are stepping in to fill that need because not everyone can afford to pay for private meeting rooms, right, in these private buildings. So libraries, um, yeah, labs are, are, are providing that. Um, I know all the libraries that I showed tonight absolutely have multiple uh, conference rooms, small and large, that are bookable. Yeah, and that's a hog all the time. I because I have to get this out because I I was I was stopped by a couple of parents recently uh, of of teenagers, and um, that their concern was that um, for teenagers in Hoboken, they said there's nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And 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 so uh, what are libraries? I know we have um, we have the teen space in our library. But but uh, what are other libraries doing with regards to providing space services for teens? Oh well, they build teen rooms, teen zones. Um, it's I was just looking at an example earlier tonight. I didn't put it in because I didn't want my presentation to go along. Beautiful teen zones that are um, almost like uh, one I looked at tonight in Wisconsin um, looked like your kitchen hangout. They had like a kitchen counter. They had um tack boards where you can you know you can put up notes um it, it, they have um technology of course they have computers um and last night at fox hills at the at the session one parent expressed that they want a safe place where their, their teenager can hang out preferably that's in proximity to a cafe right they get something to drink and eat come back whether it's built inside the library or just right outside that's really key because teenagers are hungry and thirsty all the time so a space that's gonna be friendly to teenagers, that's gonna have technology, that also has you know, library staff on hand to, to, to help out, um, whether or not they need help with um, resources, with homework, with tutoring, or just like, we have a makeshift teen zone downstairs um, that's you know filled all the time with teenagers who just want a place, a safe place to hang out where they don't have to consume anything or spend money. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, that was the complaint that, um... You know, kids can kids can't. The only place they can go really, like Panera or Starbucks. I mean, or Starbucks never really doesn't work for them. Um, but similarly, this idea of co-locating uh, recreation space with cafe and other sorts of space. Um, you know, I think we've seen a bit of that in, um, in the Grand our Grand Street annex that uh, kids will uh, do their homework and then go to their sports activities or the other way around. 
um, you know, certainly I would have loved to have, when my kids were playing soccer and things like that, it would have been nice to have um, um, some sort of space, like a cafe to go to um, um, while we waited for them. Yeah. So, and I, yeah. Go ahead. No, oh, please. No, absolutely. That's the idea. Um, one, there was just one administrative, just a question for maybe um, either Jason or Jennifer. We had a, a user who just, I, I think the city was um, going to send out a survey that had a question for the library. Someone asked, um, it would be helpful to set up a way for members here to contribute ideas after some time to absorb the presentation. Can you indicate how we should transmit any thoughts? I mean, certainly I'll, I'll put my email in the chat. You're, um, we are more than happy to do that. I think the city was sending out um, a survey. Yeah. It's a library question. Yeah, a survey A survey is going to go out. I think uh, it, the announcement in the next will be out tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, and it's it's kind of, I look at it, it's, it's a rolling process, right? And it's one of the reasons we, the city's MO in terms of any sort of large scale project is to kind of do it, is to, is to solicit um, feedback from the public in kind of an iterative process, right? So we start with a big um, kind of a wide ranging map and we try to narrow it down as we get closer and closer to the completion of the project or at least the completion of the concept of the project. Um, so as we kind of go through here, um, we had a meeting about two and a half weeks ago where we got over a thousand, we had a, a, a meeting via Zoom where we had over 100 people participate, and then we had over 1,000 survey responses. From that survey response, we narrowed down um, what even the, the original um, size and scope of the project looked like. We, we added new things, some new recreation components. We adjusted what the location of the library, we, about, we focused a lot more on activating 15th Street be much more pedestrian community friendly. So just in terms of like how we solicit feedback, it's a, it's a rolling process. So if there's something that pops up, send an email to Jenny. I can put my email address in the um, in the chat as well. I will add Director Gonzalez's email um, address as well. So there's a lot of um, a lot of opportunity. And Jenny or Jerome, if you don't mind, I, I can kind of give a little bit of an overview from the city side of kind of how we arrived at this and kind of the intent behind it. But I will defer to you on if you want to keep going. Sure. Oh, please, so, I can show the image while you're talking. Yeah, go ahead. That, <laughs> that. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so the the city has for, for, a, for over a year now has been contemplating how do we, um, how do we relocate um, the city's DPW garage? Um, which is currently located at 256 Observer Highway. And in, a, in an attempt to acquire additional open space, open parkland and things like that, we did a land swap with the developer where the developer would assume the property that is currently um, at 256 Observer along Observer Highway. And the, the city of Hoboken would acquire the Monarch property, which is in the, the Northeast corner of the city right on the waterfront. And in addition to a, a lot on uh, 800 Monroe um, for the purposes of, of open space. So while we were kind of contemplating what a modern DPW garage looks like, we really were very intentional and aware of the fact that no matter where a public works garage would go in Hoboken, we really had to focus on how do, how do we make that DPW garage a really good neighbor, no matter what part of town it, it was, it was going to be in. And as we were going through this process internally, um, you know, I've, I've, I have the, I think, unique perspective of being the administrator for the city, but I also for the last two and a half years have gotten the privilege of serving on the Hoboken Library Board. And having these conversations over and over again about the necessity and the need to expand the library's not just physical footprint but the actual programmatic footprint of the library as well it dawned on us that we have this incredible opportunity to co-locate so many um, similar to what Jerome and Jenny said co-locate so many city services on one site um, and being that the north end of town is at, currently is not really developed. You know, the neighbor to this building right now is Academy Bus. Um, 
Bijou owns a property next door, which is a developer, but it's been vacant for years, um, blighted. The north end is the uh, North Hudson Sewage Authority. So we really thought that we can make this, if, we, if the city owned a property and could develop a project that would be the anchor for almost like a new neighborhood in town, that it had to encompass a number of really important features. Obviously we needed to have a DPW garage, but in terms of the public facing components of it, the library was in our end a non-negotiable. And when I spoke with Jerome and Jenny, I think they shared in that, in that agree, in, in that kind of mind, mindset that we had to move forward with the opportunity to create a library in the North end of town. Um, additionally, we've conceived a project that includes six basketball courts, two pickleball courts, um, a library, I'm sorry, a volleyball, court and batting cages. So that's the recreation component um, to the project. Um, we, will, we will also um, create similar to what, what Jenny said is that there will be, um, I, won't, I won't call it a performing arts situa a, a kind of center, but more of a, uh, a theater style um, facility in there to do you know, any sort of uh, artist visits or um, author visits, things like that, um, inclusive of those community, those community needs and, and opportunities that I don't think we really have great spaces for currently. Um, additionally, from the first um, from the first survey that we did publicly, where we had over a thousand responses, one of the biggest pieces that the community wanted to see was the addition of a public pool, um, which I think. We all know that Hoboken doesn't really have a municipal pool um, at the moment. And that's the iteration you're seeing shared on the screen right now it shows an outdoor pool um, with which will have really an unobstructed view of, of New York City, um, which we think will be a, a really, really great um, experience for everybody to, to be a part of. So, um, you know, that's kind of the concept that we had around here. We're also going to be shifting some city operations um, or at least having some dual operations, both at City Hall and in this North End. So we'll have some city offices. So people who live in the North End of town don't necessarily have to trek downtown to pay a parking ticket or, um, or um, you know, get a, a uh, register their vehicle for a parking permit, things like that. So um, we're really looking to make this, this municipal complex. And I will put it out there and, and um, we can discuss this at another time. We're looking for a name for it. It's one of those things that I think in Hoboken, we generally are not very good at. So this is a solicitation to everyone to be as creative as you can. If you think about it, we, we have peer, peer A, peer C, peer 13. Like we just, we're not great at naming things, right? Um, we have the Southwest Park, we have the Northwest Park. Numbers and letters. <laughs> exactly, so like, and we have directions. So that's just something for everyone to think about is that if, if they have some, um, creative name opportunities that that is up for grabs here as well. So that's kind of the concept, but, but really when it comes to specifically to the library, um, it's about making this a community focused um, facility that I don't think the city has right now. And, and listening, I know Jenny, how many months have you been here now? Uh, um, almost eight. Uh, eight, eight months. Um, uh, Jenny has really instilled in all of us this vision of flexible programmatic space that that is really the future of libraries. And I think the way that we think of a library or the, the way that we have thought about what a library is, um, we need to kind of rejigger our thought process. And, and this is more of a community space and a community center. And we want the library and we hope the library is going to be the hub of, of all of that. So that's oh, kind of the concept. I know, go ahead, Jerome, sorry. Uh, Jason, real quickly, um, there was a question about uh, transportation mm -hmm. to the Moody Center. If you could just spend a minute um, or Jen spend a minute talking about, because sure. um, I remember it was mentioned last night by the director of transportation that there are going to be uh, other, you know, modes of transportation to, to make the, the municipal sure. center more accessible to the entire Time. Yes. So a, a few, there's a few things. Um, one, in terms of things that we already know, uh, there is going to be a city bike stop located on that property, number one. Number two, I think you can see it. It's a little bit 
green, there will be protected bike lanes along 15th Street. Um, but there's also, we're gonna have a dedicated hop stop um, at that site. And the other piece is the North End Redevelopment Plan um, considers a uptown light rail stop um, at, on uh, 16th Street. So the, the hope is that you can get on the light rail if need be at the path area that, at, at Lackawanna and in two stops you will be, or three stops, sorry, you will be up in the north end of town. Um, and, and that's just a, another op opportunity to, without having to get in your car, even though there will be 450 park, public parking spaces at this site, um, that was another big piece of this is making sure that we were increasing the opportunity for public parking, but you don't necessarily have to get in your car um, to make your way over here. Thank you. We had um, a question about the space. I know Jerome, you answered it, but can we, can we ask either Jennifer or Jason to address that? Does the city own the space at 15th Street? So currently the city does not own the, the lot. We are in active negotiations with the, with the property owner. Um, you know, it's a, it's a unique situation, right? Because the property owner um, has certain interests in wanting to develop it into a residential, um, into, into, residential develop, uh, uh, into a residential development. Um, he's proposed um, a few different iterations of this, of, of a project, uh, one that includes three 17 story towers. And, and the reality was, I think, I think most of us would agree that in terms of our population density and the realities of the, the growth we're already seeing from Hoboken, it was probably, we felt it was more important to be more, create a community focused development project rather than another residential development project. So we're in active negotiations with this, with this property owner um, and we're you know, looking forward to moving that forward and, and, and bringing this to fruition. Now, right now, the, 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 the printing uh, business there, it's been that that property has been vacant for a decade since Sandy, right? It's pretty dilapidated. So, yeah. So the, the, the property itself, um, the printing business has been out of has, has not been in business for, for over a decade. Um, it was serving in, in terms of its vacancy, per se, it was serving as a parking lot for Academy Bus. Um, Academy Bus no longer has um, a lease with the property owner. So it, it, is, it is effectively vacant right now, yes. All right, thank you, Jason. I think we had just had the question about transit. And yeah, thank you for your comments um, here where we do have um, you know, a simple Google doc and I'm literally copying and pasting your comments and then we're sharing with the administration. Um, but I couldn't agree. I'm personally huge fans of the Hoboken Historical Museum. Um, we're actually expanding our, we're we'll adding lockers there. Um, it's just a natural collaboration. So yeah, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and Jenny might touch, and uh, Jason might touch on uh, 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 space for art classes. I think that's part of this plan already, yes? Yeah, so I, actually, I think, Jenny, if you go to one of the other renderings, it might show a little bit, it might, the, there's one that I, I like to call them in Jen, Gonzalez laughs at me like the, the shinier ones like yes this one thank you I think there's there's another one from the other side um, yeah from 15th that, and Adams yeah so if you that look one. on here on the lower side and I'm moving my mouth so you can't see it you see there's like a you see there's like a red car stop yeah. um, in there you'll see an old fire truck yes right here so that's contemplated right now is serving as at least a portion of um, a live, uh, I'm sorry, a, a museum or a branch museum for the Oops. historical society. Oh. Um, and I, I look at a lot of these things and, and I, I don't, I think that a lot of these things fall under the umbrella of the library, whether it is art gallery space or art or maker space as Jenny referenced before, or, or museum space. I think these all kind of serve on all, all under an umbrella of what a modern library looks like. And, and when we consider um, similar, Jerome, to what you said before about you have a family who they might have two basketball games earlier in the day, and one of the parents wants to take another one of the kids to the library instead of sitting and watching the game. Now we have that. It's all in the same location, and it's all they're all co 
co-located together. And then when they're done, they can get, they can go to the cafe that's contemplated to be on the ground floor, or they can go across the street to the beer garden. And like, we're trying to create a real community and neighborhood in the north end of town in an area that does not currently exist. And, and like, I, I feel like I'm a little bit of a broken record, but the library is really the glue. We look at the library as really the glue and the, the interconnectivity to all things that are gonna happen at the north end of town. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> oh, a question about parking. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Oh yeah, I could talk about parking and how many spots and yeah, how is that? The question was, uh, will library patrons, uh, perhaps you know, community members, be able to park for free? <laughs> um, so the the project right now um, contemplates, I believe, about 430, 450 public parking spots. Um, the specifics on on who parks for free or who doesn't have not really been considered yet. Um, but I, I I think all of these things are are um, our conversation points going forward. And as we get, as I said earlier, as we continue to, to pin down more and more details, things like that will be, will be considered. Great, thank you, Jason. Well, I'm, I'm excited because as part of the Municipal Center, I think in one of the earlier renderings I saw of the community gardens, rooftop community gardens, um, hopefully that'll still be part of it. So I'm throwing that out there as an idea. <laughs> okay. We, uh, we, we did substitute the rooftop gardens for solar panels in the most recent iteration of the design, but I will take your, your comment, uh, back with us and, you know, who knows there's, there's plenty of rooftop space there. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, and, and to be clear, my, my very specific idea was beehives. So. Yes, <laughs> urban <laughs> pollinators, Jerome, we discussed, right. absolutely. <laughs> Eat these. Let me see, we have another message. Rooftop, okay, great. Yep, yes, another, another user said yes to rooftop. Yeah, park. we're, we're, the city, we're, we're very well aware of, there is um, over a thousand people currently on a wait list for community gardens. Um, wow. in Hoboken. Um, so it is one of the things that that um, we're considering. We're just trying to find the right location um, and and yes. try the logistics of of some of it is needs some working. Um, and I, I think I'm, we're open to all ideas. I think there's just a lot of um, making sure that whether someone's bring up or down soil up, you know, 10 flights of stairs or an elevator, like we don't want uh, you know, a mess everywhere all the time. So it's trying to find the right location, the right way to get up there. But I do think it is a great location and a great space for it. Jerome, it looks like Susan and you, uh, you have a fan of beehives. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> of pollinators. <laughs> um, well, you know, and, and to, to the point of gardens, um, you know, ground level space is, is, is scarce in, in our, our Third most densely populated town in the country. I mean, it, it's the hardest, the, the, the scarcest resource in our town is ground level space. And what I love about this project is that uh, we're taking the same square footage and putting it to multiple uses up for very at various different um, various different levels. And I think someone made a comment. Uh, may have been you. Uh, it may have been you. Maybe someone else. Uh, maybe been Jen last night. Is that? Um, you know, if you were to take these same facilities, uh, municipal garage, uh, library branch, um, uh, police and fire, and split them up and spread them throughout town, well, you have to, you have to acquire just that much more real estate. Um, but with doing it this way, you're taking the same plot of land, the same square footage, and putting it to multiple uses. And so, um, that's another reason why I'm, I'm such a supporter of it, because I recognize that, that if you were to try to acquire space throughout town, um, the cost, of, it, it would probably be a lot more expensive to do that than to combine them together on the same uh, plot. You know, it's my plug for the, for the project. <laughs> Thank you, Jerome. We do have another question coming in. Again, it might be for Jennifer or for Jason. 
Do you envision spaces devoted to sports beyond the pool in this complex? I think you spoke about some of the sports, but could you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mentioned it um, earlier. So the the space that there's two different um, rec recreation components that are being considered. One is more of the traditional gym space, so convertible um, basketball. Uh, they, we could house six full basketball courts. Um, additionally, it could also be converted into two full-size tennis courts. Um, that's one. And, and again, that, that could be that the space can be used, not just for basketball, obviously, but there's a number of different uh, spaces that a gym like that could be used for. Um, secondarily, there's uh, another component of the project that, that considers pickleball, which has become very, very popular in town, um, as, as is volleyball. Um, and, and as we continue to see a boom in our rec department, specifically in baseball and softball, um, we considered adding additional indoor batting cages. Um, we currently have one set of batting cages um, at the Little League Field at, at um, Fourth and River. Um, but we are, and we have another, we have more batting cages, but those are strictly outdoors at Mama Johnson Field. But we have considered adding two new sets of batting cages so that we don't have any weather related issues um, to consider when, when teams can practice. Um, just, just one note to, to add to that too, you know, those are our proposed recreation uses that we, you know, have identified and developed based on our recent survey responses, um, but those will continue to be refined. And as uh, Jenny emphasized, you know, the whole goal of this this uh, project, this entire complex is to be as flexible as possible. So both of those spaces are very open and dynamic. And if there are other recreation amenities that um, residents would like to see, we, we welcome your feedback on that. Um, our, our current survey is open. Um, as uh, Jason said, there'll be a, a Nixle and social media going out tomorrow about it. Um, and I posted the uh, link to our project website in the chat. So you can go there and complete the survey now if you if you wish. Um, and, you know, we were all of this is still in process. Right. So we there's still opportunities to add, of course, plenty of other uh, community recreation amenities. You know, um, we're looking for your feedback. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. And that link, I'll, I'll repost it again to the complex. I think you had it earlier. And we did have a question from um, a member here. Which we're into, how many square feet would the proposed library branch occupy? So I think it, it's a it's a fluid number right now that I don't think is I have to see. Um, I, it's a fluid number right now, right? And I, I think as it goes to the flexible space of the of the of what's intended for the project, I think the the space will kind of grow and uh, will and contract as as programming is needed. I think. Um, in terms of what's specifically allotted that is to the library plus other programmatic spaces that could be used for a senior center plus space that could be used for an author's talk like yeah. i think we're we're in excess of 20 25,000 square feet that's fantastic thank you yeah jen would you agree with that i have to talk to my boss <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, ab absolutely. It's really about the fact that so many of the spaces in this building will be utilized by the library um, and, you know, the the community at large, right? So, um, you know, we're looking at kind of a theater uh, space that would be perfect for, for talks or, you know, art classes. We've got plenty of classroom space, plenty of meeting space. So, you know, we're, we're certainly uh, in excess of 20,000 square feet. Um, it's just kind of, you know, how we we mold and shape those spaces as we go forward together in this design process because the library will be involved every step of the way making sure that the space works for your needs and to be sure this is one of um speaking out of school here this is this is the first of what will be more um workshops where we'll um solicit um uh, feedback from the community and, and present um you know how the design is coming along and, and so this is going to be an iterative process um but as i said in the beginning of uh in the beginning of this this is your library um and so we want to make sure that it incorporates what the community wants and needs yeah i i, I want to add uh, 
the ideas that I propose tonight may or may not resonate with Hoboken. Um, at the college I, I served under as dean, uh, we list, we had a large Muslim population, and in the library we turned a small space into a, a multi faith room, a prayer room, because many of our students needed to pray during the school day. Um, they needed a quiet, dedicated, uh, uh, not a large room space for that, and that was. Uh, directly out of response from our, our community, our constituents. So one thing I know I heard last night and I, I, um, I noted that was the premium for, sounds old fashioned, but like a quiet space. When you live in a dense, dense urban area and you perhaps share a thousand square feet with four other people or less, um, having a, a space that's quiet where you can study or read, write. We have a lot of writers in town. You know, that's something we, we we are hearing as well. So we would be incorporating all that feedback into this space to ensure that we we have that we have that amenity and that that um, just that that space for our members, for our community, because it is it is your library. So with that, we're coming up on the, the one hour mark. If, um, if anyone has any final questions, now's the time to ask them. Otherwise, I think the links have been provided for you to ask questions um, uh, away from, uh, from this meeting. Uh, so are there any uh, final questions or comments? It's the board. No? Okay, well. Um, you do you do know how to um, to submit questions or comments um, afterwards. And um, um, again, thank every I thank everyone for taking the time out of your evening. We know how precious that is uh, to to come and participate in this um, and to um, to give your input. You know, I, I community participating in these sort of events, um, being an active member of our community is what makes Hoboken the place that it is. And, and we, we value your participation. So thank you. And thank you, Jason, of Hoboken Business Administrator. Thank you, yeah. Jennifer, Director Gonzalez, both of you for being here tonight and answering all these questions. Of course, Jay, thank you so much for having us. And we look forward to the, uh, the next public engagement session to uh, hone in more on these details. Happy, looking forward to it as well. All right, thank you, everyone. Have a good night. All right, thank, thank you. you. Good night.